This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The Secure Verification Principles Level 100 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application testing and provides an introduction to security testing best practices, techniques, and tools of the SDL. Addressing the subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Please note that this is a level 100 presentation meant to familiarize you with security testing fundamentals and principles. These fundamentals and principles will be built upon in later SDL presentations. In this presentation, we will complete a high-level overview of the SDL verification phase and the security testing techniques and tools used in this phase. These security testing techniques and tools have been pivotal in enabling Microsoft to continue to deliver safer and more privacy-aware and trusted applications to its customers since the inception of the SDL in 2004. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, and executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is the quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities, mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. 
During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on the secure verification, or sometimes referred to as testing or quality assurance, phase of the SDL and related tools and techniques. The remainder of this presentation will focus on key SDL verification phase topics, such as the difference between functional testing and security, techniques, tools, and handling security bugs. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on secure verification principles, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. An important tenet of this SDL verification phase is security testing is different and distinct from functional testing. Functional testers evaluate to what extent an implemented application adheres to its original design. That is, they compare how closely the two match. Essentially, they ask the question, does the application do what it was intended to do? And they develop and execute test cases to verify whether or not the application does indeed do what it was intended to do. If the functionality is not specified in an application design, functional testers will not test for that particular functionality. Security testers, however, fulfill a different and often more difficult and complex role. Security testers also evaluate to what extent an implemented application adheres to its original design. However, they focus on the security features of an application and ask the question, how well were the security features, if any, implemented, and which ones, if any, are missing? In addition to their emphasis on evaluating the completeness of security features, security testers also evaluate the unintended functionality of an application. Applications operating in the presence of unintended functionality can lead towards misuse. Therefore, security testers evaluate the ability of a malicious user to exploit such extra and unintentional functionality. Often, security testing is referred to as negative testing because of this orthogonal goal. So why does functional testing not include security testing? Some have argued that functional testing should incorporate security testing consideration especially in the cases where security is a feature of an application. The operative word there is should. In an ideal world, test plans would include both positive, functional, and negative security test cases. In the real world, this has been found to be rarely the case. Given established deadlines, results-oriented application development approaches due to business pressures, and already limited resources, application development teams tend to allocate resources to proving the correctness of an application rather than identifying the incorrectness of an application. In this presentation, functionality refers strictly to the productivity aspects of an application being developed. To better conceptualize the goals of functional testing as compared to security testing, let's focus our attention to the illustration on the slide. The circle on the left corresponds to the intended functionality of an application. This is the functionality envisioned by the designers of an application. The circle on the right on the other hand, corresponds to the actual implemented functionality of an application. This is the functionality that is implemented through the source code and compiled binary of an application. Let's now walk through each of these sections and observe the roles fulfilled by both functional and security testers. Traditional functional testing efforts tend to focus on this first section, that is placing their emphasis solely on intended functionality without regard to evaluating any extent of actual functionality achieved. This section corresponds to application functionality that has been specified in the application designs, but has not been implemented in the actual application. Here, 
Functional testing is useful because it can answer the question, does the application do what it was designed or intended to do? If the answer is no, then an application bug is noted and addressed by the developers. Functional testing conducted in this section can also address a subset of security testing which focuses on the insufficiency of security controls. An example might be insufficient authentication and authorization controls. However, specifying security controls in application designs has been found to be rare in practice, so these sorts of issues are rarely identified during the functional testing process. The center section corresponds to the application functionality that has been specified in the application designs and has also been implemented in the application. Functional testing conducted in this section can also address a subset of security testing which focuses on the quality of security controls. An example might be an evaluation of how well authentication controls were implemented. Again, since specifying security controls in application designs have been found to be rare in practice, functional testing performed in this section rarely identifies these types of issues. This final section corresponds to testing application functionality that was not intended by the application designers, but was inadvertently implemented in the actual application code. This section can include security implement implementation issues such as buffer overflows and integer arithmetic errors. Implementation issues such as these can have very serious security ramifications. Since this added functionality was never specified by the application designers, these types of issues would not be accounted for in functional tests. Security testing, however, would be able to identify and assess this unintended functionality. In order to be an effective security tester, you need to be able to think like a malicious user who is attacking your application. The first and only rule of security testing is that there are no rules. Malicious users are unique in that they are not constrained by any rules, deadlines, best practices, conscience, or anything else like that. Oftentimes, you will learn of an application development team who have analyzed the security issue and concluded that malicious users would not try to do that. These are famous last words of application security. It is impossible to accurately predict what a malicious user will or will not do. The only valid assumption that can be made about a malicious user is that they will attack your application. The third important point regarding the use of an application's client component is difficult for most developers and testers to understand at first. Malicious users do not have to play the game by your rules such as using provided client applications to access server components. Malicious users commonly bypass client components entirely and use raw protocol commands, scripts, attack tools to communicate directly with the server. In these scenarios, any protection implemented within client components will be bypassed. This is why it is important to be cognizant of scenarios where malicious user has built their own client to communicate with your server components while executing your security testing plans. Lastly, security testers must be aware of the capabilities of more sophisticated malicious users. Any external dependencies that your application may require to function correctly, such as web services, firewalls, and other external applications, are viable attack vectors. Your application must be able to continue to operate securely when its dependencies fail or have been compromised. Building your own malicious versions of those external dependencies is the best way to test the scenario. Now that we have addressed the differences between functional testing and security testing, and the mindset of malicious users, it is now time to cover several prevalent security testing techniques employed during the SDL verification phase. The SDL verification phase includes, but is not limited to, the following prevalent security testing techniques. Fuzz testing, penetration testing, runtime verification, and code review. It is important to note that each of these security testing techniques have their own pros and cons. Any one security testing technique is insufficient to yield complete security verification. This is the reason why the SDL employs several security testing techniques instead of relying on a single security testing technique to better ensure that applications delivered to customers are more secure and trustworthy. A majority of application vulnerabilities exist today due to developers failing to validate inputs. Fuzzing is a testing methodology that can help identify security issues that manifest due to inputs not being properly validated. Fuzzing is a core testing technique in the SDL verification phase. There are several approaches to fuzz testing. 
However, the two most common are called smart fuzzing and dumb fuzzing. Smart fuzzing examines valid inputs into an application and then varies those inputs to create invalid inputs. Each of those invalid inputs is inputted to the application being tested and the application's behavior to those inputs is observed by the security tester. For example, if a valid input into an application is a credit card number that is 16 digits, then smart fuzzing would create invalid variants of that input such as 16 characters, a mixture of 16 characters and numbers, 16 symbols, and so on. These invalid inputs are inputted into the application and the application's reaction to those inputs is observed. Typically, if an invalid input case causes an application to raise an exception, crash, or, or emit some unhandled error, a vulnerability such as a buffer overflow, a format string attack vector, or a denial of service vector has been identified. Dumb fuzzing is similar to smart fuzzing, except that the invalid input variants used in this approach are created randomly rather than in a targeted and deliberate fashion. Going back to our credit card example, dumb fuzzing would use invalid inputs such as entering no data, 1,000 characters, and a single character. These again are random values that do not consider actual valid inputs or how they are processed by the application before creating invalid input variations. As with any security testing technique, fuzz testing has its pros and cons. One of the key strengths of fuzz testing is that the types of security code weaknesses that it identifies are usually very severe in nature. Examples include code weaknesses are buffer overflows, integer arithmetic errors, and SQL injection, which are all vulnerabilities that could allow a malicious user to assume complete control of an application. One key detriment of fuzz testing is that in order to identify security code weaknesses, the application needs to crash or error out due to some invalid input. This means that any vulnerability or application weakness does not result in a crash or some exception cannot be found using fuzz testing. Examples of such code weaknesses include cryptographic weaknesses and information disclosures. This is, again is one reason why the SDL employs several security testing techniques instead of relying on a single one to better ensure that applications delivered to customers are more secure and trustworthy. The general approach to fuzz testing is to first identify all entry points into an application. The second step is to determine the valid inputs that each application entry point is expecting and create a set of valid inputs. For instance, if a text box in an application is expecting a username, then valid usernames might be Steve, Lenny, and Kevin. The third step is to modify the valid inputs created in step two into invalid inputs. Going back to our example from before, invalid inputs might be Steve, Lenny, and Kevin, but with each letter E replaced with the number three. The final step is to feed these invalid inputs into the application and observe how it responds. If the application crashes, raises an exception, or causes some unexpected error, then a potential security code issue has been identified. If dumb fuzzing is being employed, then step two and three may be skipped and random data may be used for step four. The amount of invalid inputs used in fuzz testing, smart or dumb, can grow to be very large, sometimes exceeding hundreds of thousands of different invalid inputs. Also, the act of entering those invalid inputs into an application and then observing the application's reaction to the inputs can be very re repetitive. Therefore, it is recommended in the SDL that fuzzing tools be used or developed to conduct fuzz testing. Automation and tools you can use will be discussed later in this presentation. The next security testing technique discussed in the SDL is penetration testing. Penetration testing simulates an actual attack against an application and measures the application's ability to withstand those attacks. Penetration testers will use a series of manual techniques and automated tools to test and exploit potential vulnerabilities in the application. While penetration testing can be useful to understand the security posture of an application, it is important to also understand that the results of the penetration test are only relevant to the state of the application at the time of the test. This means that if an application changes or is re-engineered in any way, the results from the penetration test will most likely no longer be applicable. Therefore, if a penetration test is to be conducted for an application, then it should be performed when the application is nearing its final state. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what is the difference between penetration testing and more tool-centric security testing techniques like fuzz testing? The goal of each are very similar. 
if not overlapping, and both may be used to analyze and improve the security posture of an application. However, it is how each of these techniques arrive at the results is where the difference may be best realized. Automated tools use set checks and hard-coded methodologies to discover vulnerabilities, whereas penetration testing uses the ingenuity of the penetration tester. The human element allows the penetration tester to go beyond the simple discovery of vulnerabilities and yields the ability to connect vulnerabilities together to illustrate more potentially damaging scenarios. This ability to connect different vulnerabilities and application behaviors together to simulate more complex attacks is something that automated tools lack or do not perform as well as humans. Runtime verification testing techniques are used to simulate error conditions while an application is operational. The goal is to observe how an application behaves under these conditions and detect any security code issues that may exist. Tools are often used in runtime verification. One of the key tools used in the SDL is Microsoft's App Verifier. App Verifier will be discussed later in this presentation, but briefly, it is a tool used to simulate runtime air conditions that would be difficult to create under normal testing situations. Code Review is the last SDL verification phase security testing technique that will be discussed in this presentation. Code Review involves the manual line-by-line -line review of an application's source code to identify common code weaknesses that could allow a malicious user to attack an application. Code reviews involve a considerable amount of effort and should ideally be conducted for high priority code. Code review is a very effective security testing technique. Having direct access to the source code of an application yields security testers a distinct advantage. With code review, security testers can clearly see what the application does and they can correctly focus their efforts on areas of code that are likely to be attacked. However, for all the benefits of code review, there is one serious negative aspect of code review process. It can be very labor intensive and time consuming. Applications today can easily exceed hundreds of thousands of lines of code. As such, the likelihood of a code reviewer missing certain vulnerabilities can be high. This likelihood increases even more after long and arduous code review sessions that are conducted by code reviewers. Fortunately, as we will see in the next section, Microsoft has developed several code review tools used in the SDL that are available for download to assist its customers. Microsoft has developed several tools its internal teams use to identify common application security weaknesses when developing applications with the SDL. To help Microsoft's customers achieve similar levels of success, several of these tools have been made freely available for download. These tools can be broadly categorized as source code analysis, binary analysis, and runtime analysis tools. The next section of this presentation provides a high-level overview of each tool category. It is important to note that any one of these tools in their own right is insufficient to ensure that an application is free from vulnerabilities or is secure. In fact, no tool from Microsoft or any other company can provide such assurance, and each tool consists of certain strengths and weaknesses. This is again why the SDL does not rely on any one testing technique or tool alone but rather it uses a combination of guidance, tools, and processes to help deliver more secure and more trusted applications to Microsoft's customers. The first category of application security testing tools is static source code analysis tools. These are tools that can scan an application's source code and alert testers to common detectable security vulnerabilities. As was previously indicated, tools should not be used as a replacement for sound security development and testing practices but rather as an addition to those practices. The next category of application security testing tools is binary analysis tools. Binary tools, like static source code analysis tools, can evaluate an application for common security implementation weaknesses. However, instead of examining source code to identify application security issues, binary analysis tools examine the compiled binary of an application. The final category of application security testing tools is the Runtime Analysis Tools category. Runtime analysis tools may be used to assist testers in evaluating an application while it's operational. In addition to guidance on identifying application security risks, 
The SCL also provides guidance regarding how to respond to such risks. Specifically, the SDL verification phase defines how application security issues should be handled through the creation of a security bug bar. A security bug bar defines beforehand how application security vulnerabilities will be rated, filed, and fixed. The SDL security bug bar accounts for the following threats, which are created by application security vulnerabilities in order of most to least severity. Elevation of privilege. This refers to the ability of a malicious user to execute arbitrary code or to obtain more access privilege than intended. Denial of service. This refers to the ability of a malicious user to deny legitimate users access to an application. Targeted information disclosure. This refers to the ability of a malicious user to locate and read information from anywhere on the system that an application is running on, including system information that was not intended or designed to be exposed. Spoofing. This refers to the ability of a malicious user to impersonate another user or resource of the application or operating system. Then finally, tampering. This is the ability of a malicious user to permanently modify any user data or data used to make trust decisions in a common or default scenario that persists after restarting the operating system or application. Here's a sample security bug bar. In the first column, the bug bar defines the severity of a security bug and the second column describes the threat type and criteria required to be considered in that severity category. A severity rating of 1 represents those bugs that have the highest potential for inflicting damage, whereas a severity rating of 4 represents those bugs that have the lowest potential for inflicting damage. The defense and depth row represents bugs with security ramifications without any known method for exploit. In this example, a security bug is considered to be severity 1 if it allows a malicious user to elevate their privilege as a remote user. Another example might be that a security bug is to be considered severity 3 if it allows a malicious user to cause a denial of service condition where the damage is temporary. As indicated before, this bug bar shown is only an example of a bug bar. When using a security bug bar, application development teams agree upon how a bug in each severity category is to be addressed. For instance, a response to a severity 1 category bug might be that it must be fixed immediately, whereas severity 3 category bug might not need to be addressed until the next major release of an application is scheduled. This concludes the discussion on the SDL Secure Verification Principles. In this presentation, a high-level overview of the SDL and the important role it fulfills in the verification stage of an application's software development lifecycle was provided. Several security testing tips, techniques, and tools were also addressed. The presentation concluded by providing an overview of how the SDL categorizes application security issues through the use of a security bug bar. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft which are incorporated in its SDL and more specifically in this presentation which focused on secure verification principles have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com.